So now I'm going to do a continuation. Now let's continue with another um, type of um, organic compound. And this type of organic compound is now called the nucleic acids, okay? And um, I think I've mentioned this before. I said the nucleic acids, we have two types of nucleic acid, namely, we have the DNA and the RNA, okay? These are organic compounds. DNA and RNA are also regarded as the uh, organic compounds. So collectively, DNA and RNA are called the nucleic acids, okay? These are molecules that are found within our cells, okay? You will learn more about the DNA and RNA in more details when you get in grade 12. So these nucleic acids, okay, are called the organic compound, like I said. It's called the deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, it is called ribonucleic acid. So now let us learn about nucleic acids. So the nucleic acids are made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. It will make sense when you get in grade 12, okay? We have the phosphate group, we have the um, nitrogenous bases, they have nitro, you, it will make sense when you get, but right now, all you need to know is that the nucleic acids, which are DNA and RNA, they are made up of these elements. Do not forget, we are talking chemistry of life. We want to combine the chemistry. I said the chemistry is all of those elements that you see on the periodic table. And in life, we want to understand how are those elements interact with life of human being. Okay, so we want to learn about the elements inside of human body and what are the importance of those elements. But now here, nucleic acids are made up of collective elements. The collective elements are hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and, um, and, and phosphorus. So all of these elements combined together, they're going to form what you call the nucleic acids, which is DNA and RNA. There are two types of nucleic acid. Like I said, it is DNA, which is called the oxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, which is called the ribonucleic acid. Okay, there are two types. If I ask you how many types of nucleic acids we have, there are two. Name them. DNA and RNA. So now, where is DNA found? It's very important to know where do we find the DNA in human body. The DNA is found in the nucleus. We know the cells, right? We are all familiar with the cells. We know that the cell has um, cytoplasm. All cell organelles, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus. There are many things under human cell, right? But specifically, in the nucleus of the cell, that's where we'll find the DNA. And what does the DNA do? It carries the hereditary characteristics. The hereditary characteristics are the reasons why you look like one of your parents. You can see maybe by your nose, maybe by your eyes, your ears. You inherited characteristics from one of your parents. So DNA, it carries that. It carries the hereditary characteristics. What do you inherit from your parents? The traits or the characteristics that you take from your parents. One of the reasons why you look like your parents, maybe by your eyes, maybe by your ear, or one, two, three. That's what DNA do. But where is DNA found? It is found in the nucleus of a cell. So in this slide, we have just spoke about the elements that makes the nucleic acids. Number two, we spoke about two types of nucleic acids. Number three, Specifically, we were only focusing on the DNA. We said that the DNA is found in the nucleus with the location of the DNA and the function of DNA. It carries the hereditary characteristics. Be careful so that when I ask you um, to answer these questions, know how to answer them. So RNA, now let's talk about RNA. RNA is found in the nucleus as well. And it is also found in the cytoplasm of the cell and plays a role in protein synthesis. So now, together, both DNA and RNA, they play a role in protein synthesis, but you'll see that again as time goes by, not now, when you continue with your studies. So under nucleic acids, we're not going to ask you much of questions or complicated questions. This slide over here, it's very important for you to understand the nucleic acids. This is fine for you. 
So RNA is found in the nucleus, just like DNA. And again, RNA is found in the cytoplasm of the cell. Think or picture the structure of your cell in your mind. You know what does the cell look like. More especially animal cells, which is our cells, they are irregular in shape. And then we have the nucleus. And here we have the cytoplasm. And then we have a lot of ribosomes on the cytoplasm. This is how a human cell looks like, right? It is irregular in shape. It's made up of the cell membrane. We know that from grade 9, 10. So now this is the nucleus of the cell. Inside of the nucleus of the cell, we have the chromatin network. This chromatin network, it is called the DNA. Apparently, we can also find the RNA inside of the nucle um, nucleus. But be careful. Nucleus is not this chromatin network. So that means, I mean, so RNA. So we can also find the RNA in the nucleus. We can find the RNA in the cytoplasm of the cell. But now, what is the importance of RNA? It, this role, um, it plays the role in protein synthesis. So what is the protein synthesis? Formation of the proteins. Our body forms the proteins. So now, how do we get to form these proteins? RNA, that's what it does. It helps in the formation of the proteins inside of our body. Okay? I hope this is clear. So this is the only, though, from that slide, you only need that information and make sure that you understand it. Make sure guys, you understand these things, okay? So we're about to get done. We're done with the nucleic acids. That's it. And now we're gonna talk about the vitamins, okay? Now let's learn about the vitamins. Now, what are vitamins? Vitamins are organic compounds, right? It falls under organic compounds and are required in small quantities by animals. Uh, when you talk about the animals, we are not talking about the cows only and what. We're also talking about us. Okay? So, vitamins are organic compounds. Falls under organic compounds, not inorganic. And we need them in a very small quantities, not by large quantities. Now, vitamins are also essential, meaning are also important for normal metabolism. Remember, I said to you the metabolisms or the metabolic reactions, these are the reactions that are taking place in the cells. So if you want your cells to function properly to deliver the so that your body can be healthy, you need the vitamins. Okay. So now so vitamins are very important for normal metabolism for reactions to take place normally. Number two this is the first function of the vitamins, okay? And then what are vitamins for? For growth and development of the human body. It's true. For you to grow up, for you to develop, you need the vitamins. You really need, the, you, you really need these things, vitamins. Okay? So now we have different types of vitamins. For example, we have vitamin A, vitamin B1, we have vitamin C, we have vitamin D, we have vitamin E. Apparently, there are more than this, but for you at this point in time, these are types of vitamins that you know, we should know. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. There are five of them. So now, where do we get the vitamin A? We get the vitamin A from yellow vegetables and liver. Chicken liver, ox liver. When you eat liver or when you eat the yellow vegetables, for an example, the pumpkin, right? It's yellow or orange, whatever the case may be. When you eat yellow vegetables, you're going to get vitamin A. When you eat carrots, carrots, I don't know if you've realized this. You know what? Man? If you have carrots or whatever, the liver, if you eat liver, you eat carrots, just know that you're going to get vitamin A from those food, um, um, those types of food. Man? And therefore, if you do not have, or if you have deficiency, uh, if you lack vitamin A in your body, when you lack vitamin A in your body, the deficiency disease you're gonna have you're gonna suffer from night blindness if you don't have enough vitamin a in your body you're gonna have night blindness you're not gonna be able to see at night have you ever had this thing of when they say when you eat the carrots you become smart you you, you are the born like you can see like you become awake like you become smart you can see things that's just the say right it's true when you eat the carrots carrots they are rich of vitamin a so when you eat the carrots, your vision is going to be clear. You're going to see properly. That's the truth. Like, that's the truth. 
when they say to you, "It take your house, you're gonna be smart, but <laughs> you're gonna be smart. It's just that you're gonna be, you're gonna, your vision is gonna be clear. You look like you're gonna have a proper vision. So normally, people who are having night blindness, who can see at night, who just struggling just to, they lack vitamin A, and these are good sources of vitamin A. This is where you can get your vitamin A, and the vitamin B one. Where can we get vitamin B1? When you eat brown rice. Guys, be advised. These things are not for you to learn, but you need to practice these things because they are very important. So now when you talk about the brown eyes, what are we talking about? We are talking about the rice that has, that is rich of vitamin B1. The whole grain bread, you need to eat the whole grain bread. The legumes, you need to eat such things like this. So now, if you lack vitamin B1 in your body, what's going to happen? You're going to have this disease, which is called the beriberi. The beriberi is when like your skin is kind of dry. Let me show you the picture. Seeing the picture over here, the beriberi increased the heart rate. Your heart rate is, your heart is going to beat fast. And then you're going to have shortness of breath. You're going to, you're going to struggle to breathe. And then the swelling of the lower legs, you, 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 the legs are going to be swollen. Why? Because you're suffering from a disease which is called the beriberi. Your skin looks dry. It's going to be itchy at some point. And this is not a good sign of a human body. And therefore, this beriberi, you get it because you don't eat brown rice. You don't eat the whole grain bread. You don't eat the legumes. So you lack vitamin B1. You're supposed to have vitamin B1 in your body to avoid diseases such as beriberi, okay? And therefore the vitamin C, you need vitamin C. Where are we going to get the vitamin C? This one, I love it. I remember it when I was doing grade 10. Vitamin C from citrus fruits and tomato. Citrus fruits are sour fruits such as lemon. Those are orange. Those are citrus fruits. So when you eat, if you say, no, I don't like orange, I don't like lemon, I don't just like fruits, just know that you're going to lack vitamin C. And if you lack vitamin C, you don't eat tomatoes, you don't eat citrus food, you know what's going to happen? You're going to have a disease that is called scurvy. The deficiency disease, deficiency meaning the lack, lack of vitamin C is going to lead to a disease that is called scurvy. And in this picture, this is what the scurvy looks like. You're going to have a your gums are going to bleed. You're going to have painful gums. Imagine your gums are going to bleed nonstop. Why? Because you have scurvy. You don't eat citrus fruits. You don't eat tomato. Eat tomatoes. Eat citrus fruits, guys. These things are healthy. They are rich of vitamins. The vitamins of interest. It's C. And therefore, vitamin D. I also love this one. Vitamin D, where do we get vitamin D? We get vitamin D from oily fish. We get the vitamin D from the milk, right? We need to eat milk, pap and milk, guys. We need to eat the fish. Fish is a good source of vitamin D. Milk is a good source of vitamin D. So apparently, if you lack vitamin D, you're going to suffer from rickets. <laughs> it's where your bones are not properly um, good, like they're not shaped well, you know? Gonna have brackets, rickets are some sort of brackets, or I don't know what they call it. X cross, uh, your 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 legs are going to be crossed like this, like an X. Those are rickets, okay. So don't go around and say to people they like vitamin D. No, so but normally as a scientist or as a science student, just know that vitamin D is very important to avoid rickets the bones, your bones, so that you don't become brackets, okay? And therefore, <clears throat> we have vitamin E. Where do we get vitamin E? From the spinach, from the lettuce, the green vegetables. I don't eat spinach, I don't eat lettuce. You're going to lack vitamin E. Let me tell you that right now. So eat vitamin E, guys. I mean, eat spinach, lettuce, eat vitamin E. And I mean, it's a good source of vitamin E. But now, if you don't eat those things, spinaches, lettuces, if you don't get any vitamin E in your body, what's going to happen? You're going to suffer from what you call poor nerve conduction anemia. So that means your nerves won't be able to conduct the 
impulses. Okay, for an example, uh, you you will ban without being without feeling pain. You won't even be able to respond. You won't even be able to just you know act towards the stimuli. If there is a heater there, or let me say there is a fire, and then there is a fire on your skin because you have poor nerve conduction, your skin is gonna burn without even feeling the pain because you have poor nerve conduction. So that your nerves are not working properly to detect or to convert the stimulus into an impulse that will travel through your brain and your brain will start telling you to act upon that stimulus. So you won't be able to do that. So that's a poor nerve conduction uh, anemia. And therefore, that's it about the vitamins. So that's the only information that you need about the vitamins. And apparently, we are done with this from me. Thank you very much. Until we meet next time with different questions and with 